Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Planes Trains, Trains, and, and Comic, comic Books. Books. Today, we are, uh, I guess, dipping our toe back into the manga uh, realm. scene, the realm, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we're we reading a horror manga, or we read a horror manga called Gyo, G-Y-O, uh, that is by the creator Jinji Ito. And I specifically picked this one because... One, I already I had already read it, and I was like, John, you need to read this. It's fucking crazy and weird. And two, this is very like I like this because it was it had similar concepts to other things I like. And when I can relate some certain you know things to other things, I'm like, okay, I get like it helps me comprehend some some things. This this, this book had a lot of ideas in it, <laughs> but the main idea was a lot like the thing, like body horror the movie the thing from the 80s with kurt russell mm-hmm. there's like you know a monster body horror fucks up people people turn into monsters kind of thing so um i liked that about it a lot oh yeah so i, liked I was the, like you the, need to you need to read this john it's fucking awesome the the subtitle caught me right away because it says the death stench creeps and i was the like oh stench creeps. that's such a like like that that almost gives me like a little like chill like ooh, like that sounds that sounds really off-putting like what is this about <laughs> yeah yeah because so, i didn't know anything about it other than like what you said you were like yeah it's kind of like think like the thing and like then some other crazy stuff happens because there's like multiple layers I'm like, right. okay cool yeah uh and you've never read jinji ito at all right no, i have no. never read okay. i have read pieces of manga until we read the uh yamcha Dragon Ball. i can't i came back i was reincarnated as yamcha shout out again to fantastic. otakuology yeah um yeah so yeah I had like he also the, recommended some stuff by Jinji Ito. So okay, this. perfect. Well, in particular, yeah, like so. This is I will say this is like so my first real official, like full, since that one was technically a fan. Yes, yeah. one. So like this, not that it wasn't amazing, because um, I really right. did enjoy. I enjoyed that a lot. Too. But <laughs> this one, so this being my first real manga to like sit down and like go all the way through, like yeah. I'm down for like this, like the horror element. Yes, I didn't even like I didn't even think of it. And it's funny because I watched you know enough anime to know that there's some weird horror messed up anime. Yes, so yeah. why wouldn't that be in the manga as well? And yeah, so this was this was very cool. And you know, the, I gotta say, I mean, I, I very few there's very few horror comics that I've read where I've been like, that's like a fucking great idea and there's like horrific things in it yeah that i'm like holy fuck we've done some fun ones like i liked harrow county um that yes. was it wasn't that was more like just creepy like ooh, but it was not, creepy um and then the uh american vampire like the elements the basic of the vampires in that were cool and like yes. they definitely like when they vamp out is really like kind of but i, I scary, guess because they're but... vampires it didn't scare me you know like it wasn't anything we're desensitized yeah a little bit that's so 2009 yeah yeah, yeah it's way before true blood Zom- yeah true <laughs> all the vampires are, are out from twilight and true blood buffy and, and, and buffy and then all the zombies are out now we've done we've done uh walking dead the walking dead stuff so now we're on to what frankenstein's <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but the yeah like i very rarely have i read something that's that's been like holy fuck like shocking when you turn the page yeah and this one. this book had multiple <laughs> holy fuck yeah. like page turns in it uh so i will give it to the japanese specifically junji ito he is a fucking horrific motherfucker he knows how to write a page yeah uh, or how to write a page he, turn he, I'll he, say. yeah and he no. had uh, he has some very creepy and original designs it's like whoa yeah like that that yeah. is wild yeah, so anyway, let's get into it before we, you know, just keep talking about how horrific it was and not actually talk about it. But yeah, so so this book, it's great. There's only like four characters in this book, and then you only need to know two of them for most of it. So it's kind of like, oh, there's like very limited character base you have to follow. Not a lot of names you have to memorize. But the two main characters in this are, uh, there's a boyfriend and girlfriend, 
and uh, the guy's name is Tadashi, Tadashi, and the girl's name is Kaori. And I don't know how long they've been going out. She seemed very annoying, so I don't know how long. <laughs> it seemed maybe they wouldn't seem like they were going to be married or anything. Yeah, because especially because he kept saying like, "Do you want to have a, a?" I don't know about it wasn't like first kiss, but like, "Do you want to kiss?" And she yeah. was like, "No, like." Like let's hold on. Yeah, I don't like, want. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Maybe it, like the last time we kissed, it didn't smell great. Maybe you should brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Like, whoa. That's true. That's true. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, if if they're already like going for a while, it, then no one cares about that. So yeah. <laughs> everybody's you woken up next to your wife and she just kisses you and like, hey, whoa, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it starts off. Uh, and Tadashi is like scuba diving, which I thought this was funny. He just leaves his girlfriend on a boat by herself, presumably, because there wasn't anybody else on that boat. And just sitting above, and he's like scuba diving. So he's, you're supposed to always go with a buddy when you scuba dive, right? Yeah. And I'm assuming she doesn't know how to scuba dive because she doesn't have any gear on. So like, he's breaking all these rules and shit, just whatever. So he's he's already a rebel badass, you can tell. And so... <laughs> <laughs> just because of this and he's scuba diving there's all these fucking tiger sharks around and he's like oh tiger sharks huh like, yeah, like he doesn't seem to be too freaked out until they start trying to attack him but the uh he's he finds like a battleship and that's kind of like the main first thing that like he's like oh cool a battleship like in his head um and that like is kind of foreshadowing for what comes later where they kind of explain some stuff but uh, then, like, something swims by him in a very quick, like, bubble blast. He doesn't really see it. And then that's what the sharks are following, and then they see him, and then they try to go after him. So he gets out of there. He, he goes back up to his ship, and he actually gets out. And he, he's like, come on, like, help me out, woman. You're just sitting here. Like, <laughs> so That's why I was like, there's just him and her on this boat? Like, yeah. no, there's no other dude. Like, it's a pretty big boat, too, so, you know. I don't know if she knows how to drive. And she's just sitting there, like, doing nothing. Well, you know, she's not much, fishing. The, and, and this is the only <laughs> thing, like, she, I mean, she's pretty much complaining from this, from. Yeah, Steinway. I will she's say like, this. This is literally. makes me sick. Yeah, this is literally, like, uh, it was a little hard to feel sorry for her until a certain point in this book. Because I'm like, wow, she is annoying. And kind of useless in this book. <laughs> so I'll say that about the, my, one of my critiques is she's not really fleshed out or given a personality other than annoying girlfriend who isn't like supposed to really do anything. And then, which kind of sour, not sours, but it kind of makes some of the later uh, sentimental moments that kind of are supposed to have it less impactful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, that's uh, small. This is a horror movie. Like, I mean, think about every horror movie you've ever seen. There's always, like, a girlfriend and boyfriend. Like, I love you forever. It's true. Like, yeah, there's like, a jock know. that's like, what's up, babe? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're going to, you know, screw when the, when the when everybody else is gone. She's like, oh, shut up. You know, no. You yeah. Know, I'm not like that. And then, you know, something will happen later. And it's like, no, Jimmy, you. don't die. I yeah. love you. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like in that it's a horror movie I'm or a horror manga. I'm willing to overlook certain things yeah. because the tropes of horror just demand that you do that kind of thing. So... Um, but yeah, so they they walk into like this fish market as they're leaving the boat uh, dock area after they get back, and she's like, "Oh, it smells bad." And then she's like, "Oh man," like automatically she's like, "You know, your breath smells bad. Don't kiss me," and all this stuff. So she's got a thing with smells. We've already we established she smells the fish market and is like, "Ew." She didn't smell the sea. Ew. She yeah. smells the fish market. Ew. And then she's got a smell thing. Breath. Going on. Ew. So then um, she, like, leaves because she gets mad at him. Um, and then he's like, oh, I better go, like, find her after it's been, like, a couple minutes or whatever. And she sees something in the in the grass or whatever that smells really bad and is also, like, re moves really fast. And he can't see it. And she's like, oh, is it a snake or what is it? He's like, I don't know what the fuck it was. Like, it just ran right by us. So then she's like, I can't get that smell out of my nose or whatever. So, like, I'm going to take a shower I don't know what it was, but, like, maybe it's on me or something. So, and, like, it keeps getting stronger to her. She just, she takes a shower, nothing. Then she's like, is it me or, did, like, did you, is there something, are you cooking something? What's wrong with this? It smells even worse in here now. So, basically, you're, like, as you're reading this, you're like, oh, there's, it's in, 
the house now. You're thinking whatever smells bad is yeah, in this even house. Even Tadashi's finally like, okay, something, something is does. a little off. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, that's when she hears like, doop, 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 and she's like, wait, what? And she's like, because she's taking her second shower. Yeah, she now. goes for another shower. I'm going to take yeah. another shower. And, you know, when you, that's whenever bad stuff happens in a horror movie, it's whenever a girl's in a shower. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, we also say this is not a book for children. Yes. <laughs> so there's very graphic violence and then also a little bit of nudity in it. So just so you know, I mean, we're all, I would have read this when I was 13. But fuck yeah. But yeah. like, you know, whatever. Uh, well, I mean, I think most of our listeners know that our podcast in general, we curse a little. We, yeah, we, not we, a child's podcast. Exactly. You know, we, we definitely will say there's ones out there we've read that are good for all ages, everybody, but this is definitely a little more mature audience. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but just wanted to throw that out there. There's some nudity. There's some really graphic violence in it. So it's pretty awesome violence as well. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she, but like as she's taking her shower, as, as you do in horror movies, like that's when you're most vulnerable, you're naked. And she's like, tick, 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 like weird tick, tick, thumping around and stuff. And then she like looks and she sees some like shadow behind like the, I don't know, like it's like a. It's. I don't know what it is because this is like a Japanese bathroom and they have different. Like, yeah, I don't know if it's like a seat or something. Yeah, I don't know if it's a seat or like uh, some kind of cabinet or something that's in there. But uh, as she's like, she sees a shadow behind it. She calls out for, uh, and we see like this weird eyeball, which is great. Uh, and you're like, what the fuck is it? You know? <laughs> it's like, and she screams out, and she's like, you know, Tadashi, where are you or whatever? And uh, he goes in. She's passed out. She's like. I don't know what the fuck happened to her, but she passed out. She just fainted, I guess, from the yeah. from the uh, shock of seeing whatever it was. And it runs past him, and uh, again, it's too fast to see. So, like, whatever was outside is now inside. Also, it seems like it's kind of similar to the thing that was under the water, because it went right by him really fast, too. And so, he starts chasing this thing around the house. He's got, like, a ping pong paddle. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's... And it's a vase. Yeah. Oh, is it a vase? Oh, yeah. I thought it was. It, it looks like a ping pong paddle. In the, I thought in the I channel, saw him pick up a vase. vase, but then he's holding it like it looks like a, a ping, ping pong, pong paddle. paddle. Yeah, okay, okay. Paddle. So, um, it's a vase, John. I believe it's pronounced vase. Vase. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be able to say it back to you something. So, uh, but yeah. So then, ah. <laughs> yeah. So then he like he's like okay, like I gotta. F- he sees it hiding, and. Uh, he knows it's behind a piece of furniture, like a, uh, a dresser. So instead of like moving the dresser and trying to get it, he just like runs into the dresser, pushes it against the wall as hard as he can and smashes it. And then he pulls it out after he hears like smush. And then like, we see what it is. And it's this fish that's got something attached to the bottom of it. But it looks kind of like until later on when you find out it is attached, it looks like it's growing legs yeah like it, it spider lo- or crab fucking leg yeah to me it, it, so it look it looks like there's something like kind of organically like like a big tumory thing growing yes. off the bottom of this fish and it looks like it's got four crabish legs yeah um, and there's also like tubes coming from it that go under its gills the fish's gills so it's like what the fuck is yeah, this what thing is going on it looks pretty creepy gotta say the design of these creeper creatures is really creepy and horrible. Uh, and just it's just on a different level. Like, I don't know what you have to be thinking of to, to design these monsters mm-hmm. or these creatures, but he must have been on, like, some good shit or something. <laughs> or, like, on good shit and then watching the most horrific movies ever. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so this and fish. This, oh, I just was going to say, and this, de- this does take place. This is in Okinawa. Uh, and, oh yeah, so then, it's not on the main island of Japan. It's on Okinawa, or it's not on the main island. I don't know what the main island's called. The where Tokyo is. That's the yeah. main island, but they're on the island of Okinawa, um, which is more like a fishing town or a small town kind of yeah. vibe to it. Um, and so, um, and I think they're on vacation, right? Because they go back to Tokyo after this. So. Yeah, basically, they said uh, they're they're in like an uncle's. Or no, they don't go back to Tokyo. They just go back to the main island or whatever. So. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, they're at like their uncle's cabin or whatever, just chillaxing here over here. It'd be like if you go to to Galveston or something for the weekend. Yeah, but um, yeah, so he's like, "Oh, cool, I killed it." He goes, "He just like, uh, I don't know what to do with this thing. I've never seen anything like this. I'm just gonna put it in a bag 
He smashes it a couple more times with a rock. Because, like, the legs are still twitching, so. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, I don't get it. I don't know why this thing is still moving and whatever. Like, he's killed it pretty good. Um, and, like, in the meantime, uh, Kaori wakes up and she's like, what the fuck? Where is it? He's like, don't worry. I got it. I killed it for you. I'm a, I fucking did it like a man or whatever. And <laughs> took care of it. And then, like, uh, so he wraps that thing in a bag. And then he just, like, I guess leaves it in the yard, right? Yeah, he doesn't he, even know what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, he duct so. tapes the end to try to, like, contain the Puts smell. Puts the rock on it. Def- it. Yeah. It definitely has, like, a, a really bad, odor, you know, horrible yeah. odor. Yeah. And she's still like, I can still smell it. Or whatever. <laughs> and, like, she, so he's like, just rest. Be in the bed. It's gone. Don't worry about it. And then he's like, don't worry. It's, it's, it's gone away. I mean, I left it in the garden in a bag under a rock. She's like, what the fuck? I smushed it. Yeah, that's not, but that's not a way. Like, <laughs> he's like, what do you mean it's not a way? And then, like, they go to look. He's like, I'll show you. And then, like, it's gone. It's like, son of a bitch. So then, uh, <laughs> then this is like a funny, this is like one of the first, there's some weird comedy beats in this yeah. as well. I don't want to kind of read some more of his stuff and see if that's a, thread in his other manga that are horror manga because um this was funny this is like she's she's like i smell it i you know i can still smell it what's going on and then the bag that had the fish in it floats through the window like it's yeah just, it's like it's inflated it's with inflated the gas with methane with, or whatever yeah. the fuck gas you assume get you know dead body so gas yeah. or something like that yeah and uh and it's just flying around the room but like it seems to be chasing her Specifically, like, ah, I'm going to get you. Like, <laughs> and so, like, she's running away, and it's following her down the stairs and down the hall. It kind of felt Sam Raimi to me a little bit. Yes, yes. This could very much have a Sam Raimi thing. And then also, like, it's little fucking crab legs are poking through the bag. That's right. Because they're, like, sharp. And it, like, stabs uh, Tadashi and, uh, like, in the hand or whatever. And he's like, what the motherfucker like and so uh it just starts chasing her down the street like it, he's trying to hit it with a chair it g- goes out a window and just she's already like out on the street running and he it starts following her and it's just like straight up just like hounding her and it goes all the way to the beach and then it flows it floats into the ocean area or like just away into the sea and then they're standing on the beach like well that was that was weird <laughs> like he just wanted to go back home i guess or whatever and then as they're on the beach, they see more weird, splashing little fish with legs run up onto the beach, and they just start coming out all out all out now, just hundreds and hundreds of them just running onto the beach. And uh, well, actually, at first it's not hundreds; it's just a couple, a couple. Yeah. And then they're like, um, like more and more people start to find them. So they show like, oh, around the village, people are catching fish, and the fish, some of the fish that they're catching are. Have these legs, and then the best is the fishermen out on the sea. They're like yeah. pulling up the big net. They're like dumping the fish, and almost all the fish that come out have the little legs on them. And it's like all the fish, little baby fish, big old fish, all different types. There's no like discerning between these. So, and then they're like trying to hit them with like bats and shit because they're running all over their boat. Squids. There's like squids that are you know have the legs and stuff. So what the fuck is all this stuff? And then this is the best one. You know, they're on the beach. It's like the next day or whatever. And this is just like regular beach, not Tadashi and Kaori. Some other people are on the beach. Yeah. And they see like a shark. And they're like, oh my God, shark, get out of the water. And then they run out of the water. And then the shark, like, it's still coming at them. It's still coming at them. And it's charging the beach. And then it. Huh, that's weird. What is it doing? It's still coming for it. It's going to beach itself. Runs onto the beach (laughs) with these fucking (laughs) giant legs. It's a great white shark, too. It's not even like. Let's not, not little, fuck not around. Tiger shark I don't even know if they have great whites in Okinawa. Oh, yeah, they, or I whatever. mean, they have them in the the seas around there. I'm sure. You think it's too? Far I don't. North? Th- I think it's too far north. Too cold, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent, but I don't think great whites. I mean, great whites are like off the coast of California and in Australia and yeah, those all lower areas. Japan's way higher. It is way higher. Okay, yeah. I don't. I was just thinking maybe it goes Japan, Alaska. <laughs> They're like around the same area. Okay, we'll see. We'll yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So this great white just 
fucking jumps out of the water, starts run, mowing down these people, which it just a fucking attacks them. We're just like, arr, 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 like, <laughs> like, oh this, yeah. We, this is, we need the, this is this this is the Jaws uh, two or three we <laughs> yeah, needed. This is Jaws four, <laughs> the Jawsening or whatever. Like yeah. just like you know. This is what you wanted to see for Jaws 4 since Jaws 3 was ridiculous in the first place. <laughs> you might as well have grown legs and just land shark, you know. Uh, but, yeah, we see on on the the big – this big great white, you get more of a a good – a better look at what, the, what it looks like. And you see a lot more of these, like, organic tubes going into the gill slots of the shark. And the legs are, like, way beefier and stuff, but they're still, like – the weird, like, creepy, spindly crab legs looking. But all those people, they fucking did. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so then it's the next morning, or it's not the next morning. It, that was the morning uh, of the next morning where those people died on the beach. Well, now we we cut back to uh, Tadashi and Kaori, and Kaori's like, oh, was it, was it a dream? And he's like, no, nah, is everything's fucked up still or whatever. Yeah. But I swear I got rid of it this time. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what? And he's like, you, you still smell it? And she's like, yeah, I still smell it. And, uh, like, it's it's like she just can't get this fucking smell out of her, her head. And then we find out why she smells it, because that fucking great white. It's like, I don't know if the first fish told all the other fish, like, this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> Smash me with a dresser or whatever. Go get him. Yeah. But this great white is literally stalking. He looks out at the window and he just sees a fucking great white like burner, <laughs> like right outside his window. He's like, "Oh my god!" And it's like peeking in this window with his fucking dead shark eye, like, "Eh, you in there?" Like you know, and uh, it's just creepy as hell, man. You ever seen a shark's eyes? Yeah, kind of like dog's eyes. Like a dog's eyes. Oh, uh, Lifeless lake. <laughs> and so yeah, uh, it literally it's just waiting to like. Kill them, I yeah. Guess. And, so, and it's funny because he's like, "Don't worry, it's a shark, but it, it'll go away. It's not, you know, it's not going to come inside. Yeah. It's too big." And the the this is where she's like, "I'm like, okay, you need to calm down, lady. There's a fucking shark crawl walking on land that's trying to murder us. Please stop screaming about how bad it smells." That's true. Because then she's like, "There's some. I can't in, take the smell. There's some more important things happening right now." <laughs> and this fucking shark, it just. It kind of figures out because she won't shut up where they are. And it just starts walking through the house. It bursts through the door. It's like, I'm going to get you. Like, you know, like, I'm get you. yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> he's trying to hold the door. I'm like, you're not going to hold back a shark with fucking legs that just walked on the beach. I'm, yeah. You know, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but it's like, you know, a 3,000 pound shark or whatever the fuck it is. And yeah, not going to happen. And so uh, they, they like, Run away from it, and as they're, she's, he's like, jump out the window, and she's like, about to jump out the window, and we see like all the other little baby fishes are walking and running out right outside her window, and all of these things smell like death. So she's like, ew, everything's ew, and like, I'm like, oh my god, woman, there's a shark in our fucking room. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to run. Maybe plug your nose while you run if it's such a big deal or whatever. But, like, <laughs> I'm about to get eaten by a shark if you could hurry the fuck up, please. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, basically, this is where you have the massive yeah. migration of all these fish with legs start coming out of the water. We're talking, and not just fish, you know, stingray. I, I love how sharks. creative he did all these different sea creatures with the, yeah. the similar thing with the legs. Squid, The hammerhead shark. Yeah, I mean, they start running <laughs> through the whole village and town and everything. So, like, other sharks are now attacking the police. And, I mean, the whole city is overrun. It kind of reminded me of, you know, I don't know if it's in Australia or New Zealand or whatever, or, like, one of those islands in New Guinea or something, where they have those that season where the crabs, the coconut crabs, oh, yeah. migrate or whatever. And it's just like... Just crabs everywhere, walking through the middle of the streets, and you can't run them over or whatever because they're, like, all over the place, and you can't really walk. And also, they, like, can... They'll fucking, pinch you. Yeah, they'll break your fucking leg or whatever if they get a hold of you with their, their oh, one claw because they can break coconuts claws, or yeah, whatever. Right. So some of them are quite dangerous if they're large enough, I think. And so, uh, yeah, it reminded me of that. Where like, Except these ones move fast. So, like, it's even... It's like... You thought slow zombies were scary? 
these yeah. are fast zombies. Yeah. You know, so it's like this is twenty eight days later. Zombies. Yeah, yeah, or like uh, the new dawn. The new dawn. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, yeah, basically, these things are now like they're getting their revenge, and this fucking shark is. I mean, she ran pretty far away, but they're, I don't know if they're in See, like an apartment now. I think something. they went like I think he went to another level of the house. Instead of oh, going okay. out the window. And, but the shark's like trying to come up the stairs with his gigantic I mean, legs. It's hard for him. It's but. doing hard turns. We're like, oh, that shark would have broke its back if it did that. And it's not having a problem going up these small ass stairs. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Japanese code is for like buildings. I think they have smaller door openings <laughs> than, than our 36 inches. Uh, so, so I can only imagine it's not. And also, like, I don't know. I mean, this might be a stereotype, but aren't a lot of these walls, are a lot of these walls made of, like, paper and stuff? Or, <laughs> I'm or sure, not like, as insulated as, like, uh, or, like, heavy-duty built? I don't know. Because I've seen a lot of Japanese construction, and they don't look as... Like, oh, there's, like, studs and all this stuff inside of it as, like, American homes are. I don't know if that's just I, yeah, I the ones I've you. seen. Um, just the ones I've seen. The ones I've seen on, like, YouTube where they're like, let's build a Japanese house or whatever. And, like, the it, it's, like, a lot of it is more open and less, like, they have giant beams that support everything. But the inner walls are, like, just for, like, s- separating areas, not for, like insulating or any of that stuff so i don't know but this shark is just fucking tearing tearing ass in his house yeah <laughs> and uh yeah and then the girlfriend's like take care of it like and that's why i was like dude this girl needs to shut the fuck up <laughs> just take care of the shark yeah, just, is it so i mean hard? i don't understand why you can't fight a great white that's walking on land i mean that's also the thing right like i would just be like this fucking shark is walking on land Never before happened. Yeah, before, I probably would know? have been so stunned I would have been eaten by now. Yes, so. I would have been dead for sure right now. But this, this basically, this shark would have killed him and them, except it just like happens to overshoot them or something and like just barely miss him, kind of thing. Like, it, there's no reason why he shouldn't have died right here, but it ends up overshooting him and like jumping out of a window on accident, and then it falls to its death in quotation marks because it ain't dead. It comes back later, and it still smells him, I'm assuming, because it's still following him later on in the city. So, yes. But right now, he thinks it's dead. He's like, fuck, let's get out of here. And so he's, I just, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, do we have a flight to catch back to that other <laughs> island? Like, let's get the fuck out of Okinawa or whatever. So, uh, basically, they, they go to, uh, I guess back to another area i don't know what the fuck where they it shows them back in like another house i don't know if it's uh another island where they they actually travel back there but it's it's, it's just them uh we, we see yeah them. They, no they go back to tokyo okay that's what it, okay you're right right yeah so they they just cut back to them in tokyo i thought they had like a, an actual you know section where they showed them go back or whatever but it just says tokyo and then they're back at their house and we're seeing now the fish are moving to other parts of the island, other islands. Other islands, yeah. And they're it's fun. closer and closer to Tokyo. Yeah, and it's fun to see, like, the news is reporting. They're like, all of the, you know, all the local weird ass, all the fishermen and all of the, the people that, to help. And it's like the Japanese so, uh, defense force is going to help uh, as far as, like, mobilize and try to take these out. But it's weird because, like, we're shooting them and, like, nothing's really. I mean, they're shooting. <sighs> okay. I don't know what gun laws are like in Japan, but I don't know what they're shooting this great white with, but it is not enough. All right. Like they have like at max, like a shotgun for a great white shark that is walking on land and can move extremely fast. I mean, if you're not shooting it with an elephant gun or like, (laughs) I mean, at least bring something that would kill a rhino or an elephant or whatever. Like that's, that's the size of animal we're talking about. Yeah. So I would not even try to approach this thing with uh, a gun or anything. But, yeah, basically, everybody everybody's now complaining about the smell. Uh, and then we also see that Kaori is not feeling well. She has got some kind of fever. She's sick. He's like, look, you're back in Tokyo. I'm sure it'll be fine. They're not going to follow us all the way here. Uh, and then what ends up happening is uh, Tadashi's like, hey, I'm going to go visit my uncle. Give him the lowdown. What happened? I'm like. Don't worry about it. And uh, maybe he can come up with something that'll, like, either fix the issue or... Because he's, like, a scientist. Or something. Yeah. So, um, 
solutions or like give us a solution of some kind. So he tells his dad or his uncle about it and his uncle, his uncle, this is where we meet the other two characters. So his uncle is named Dr. Koya uh, or Koya Nagi. Nagi. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Koya Nagi. Yeah. And then, uh, there's, he's got an assistant named Miss, uh, Yoshi Yama. Which John said Yoshi Mama once, and I accidentally I said Yoshi Mama. Yeah, <laughs> guaranteeing our listeners that I am going to say Yoshi Mama at least once in this on accident. So, uh, but her name is yeah Yoshi Yama. Yoshi Yama. Okay. So <laughs> Yoshi Mama. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he explains to his uncle like what happened. And then like, and then we left, you know? Like, yeah. He's like, sorry about your place. It's wrecked. Yeah, uh, it's totally a, a shark was on land a and he tried white to eat shark us. Bra- broke everything. In it. And I love the uncles like, what? Like, I don't even watch the news. Like, what are you talking Everybody about? Everybody in this is very non plaz Like they don't, they're like, cool. Like I totally have no problem believing any of this or anything. <laughs> and like, oh yeah, it makes sense. I mean, what you're telling me, you wouldn't lie. Right. You know, like yeah. it was just straight up. And so uh, he tells the uncle, like, hey, you know, this is the thing, um, you know, like, and the uncle's like, well, why didn't you, like, bring a sample? And I could, like, look at it. And he's like, I'm not going to bring, how am I supposed to bring that on a plane or something? And he's like, oh, okay, I guess. Okay, so. well, I guess I'll, I'll book a flight out there. I'll go myself. Yeah. And so, uh, so uncle goes, you know, does this thing and uh, Tadashi comes back to see Kaori and uh, she's like, I can still smell it. It's getting stronger. So she just, she just, now she's like, I don't, we don't know if she's like actually smelling it because it's over here now yeah. or if. Or she just freaking, is she's, she's having like PTSD out. from it now? Yeah, we don't know. But she, or she's like the fever, she having like a fever dream or something. I don't know. She, yeah. She's sweating and it looks not good. So, um, and then she looks up. <laughs> But was she she ends up like she has a moment and she like runs, she out, runs of the out of the apartment building, yeah. and they run down the street and he catches her and they like okay they breathe for a second and then they look up and this is like you said like a yeah. little bit of comedy yeah that fucking bag there's a floating bag there's a floating bag <laughs> and it's Coming like down. I'm gonna get you <laughs> you thought you got away you sons of bitches <laughs> and so it's chasing them and at first you're like maybe it's just a bag. And then they look and they see the shadow of the fucking crab legs. Like, oh my god, no, it's not, no, it's not. It's that fucking thing. And then it pops, and then it falls, and then it's like totally gross. Like it falls and it hits the ground in front of them, and it's just completely rotted fish now. So it's not even like moving the same way or anything. It's just like now, it's it's weird. It's like now that the body is completely uh, decayed. And it's just like there's there's no way for it to hold gas because the sides of it have been ruptured yeah. and everything, and there's no there's no muscles or anything um, like holding anything in. So um, it's not. I mean, it's still moving, like trying yeah, like to the twitch, legs but it's are not, twitching and kind of, but it's not. But like it's not running, running or anything. So then Tadashi's like, "Okay, I know what to do now. Take it to my uncle because he wanted a sample." So they take it there, and this is like he opens it. And he's like, "Holy shit, that smells!" And then. Uh, they take he takes it off uh like the fish right and he finds out like what it is yeah i love that he's like ptsd a little too he's like oh, i know i recognize this oh smell. yeah that was <laughs> fucked up too he's like oh it's like dead bodies yeah totally he's like, what he's like yeah you do you know the smell of dead bodies to yeah. he's well, like i do uh, no i don't <laughs> uncle but yeah so he gives it to the uncle to like work on then they're like okay let's go back he's gonna work on it it now he'll find some some way to like fix this because he's a scientist. He's a scientist. Once again, horror logic. I'm fine with this horror movie logic. Yeah, I'm okay. I was into it by this time. I'm like great white running through the city. Yeah, I am into this fucking book. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you were a kid and watched Shark Week as much as I did, but I was into <laughs> that shit. Heck so, yeah. uh, you know, Jaws, one of my favorite movies as a child. You know, it made me think of the movie The Faculty, where they like find the creature and they bring it to the. The high the school teacher. T- science teacher, and he's like John Stewart. He's like, put it in this tank, and we're gonna, you know, we'll call somebody, but we're gonna run experiments on it first. And yeah. he's like, puts his hand in there, all like, oh look, it's back to life. Let's touch it and do stuff with it. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> sure, that makes sense. And so they 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 go back to their uh, you know apartment. Right, okay, it's fine. And he's like, look, nothing's here. It was just that one, and there's no other ones. Like you're just freaking out. And she's like, she's no. Like, don't patronize me. Like, I know I can smell it. I know they're here. I'm sure they're in our room. 
And he's like, look, let me show you. And he like starts opening all the cabinets and all this stuff. And something runs out. And she's like, ah, and it looks like a little fish. But then he hits it with a shoe. And he picks up the shoe and it's a cockroach. And it's a big cockroach, too. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, those are those tropical like Japanese cockroaches or something. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so. And he's uh, like, it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's just you're just freaking out. Until they go to sleep. And he's like, huh, well, I smell it now a little bit, too. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't know. What does that smell? So then we cut back to the uncle who's looking at this thing. He, like, washes the fish, the old rotted fish off. And you see, we, this is where we actually get the first look at this thing. We find out it's not part of the fish. It's not It's not like a tumor. It's actually something that has legs. It's got a couple, uh, like, pipe-looking yeah, things. Yeah, tubular things. Tubular things, things coming out of it. And then there's like a, a Venus flytrap ish mouth on the top of it, and the uncle's like, "Huh, that's weird. Let me uh, poke it with my finger or whatever." And he sticks his hand in the Venus tra- flytrap area, and it like grabs onto his arm. And then he's like, "What the fuck?" And it like snaps onto his arm. He starts calling for his uh, his um, Yoshiyama. Yeah, Mrs. Yoshiyama, and. Uh, and he lo- he looks like he's in fucking pain, like pain, 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 like yeah. extreme his, pain. His like, face, I love the way his face is drawn. Like it looks almost like ghostly skeleton. Yeah. At first, he's just like Miss Yoshiyama, something's wrong or whatever. And then he's like, Rah! like his face looks like he's fucking feeling it, right? Yeah. And then we just hear like, ah! and then it cuts away. We're like, whoa, what happened there? So then, then we see in the news, they're talking about. It's spreading to mainland Japan. Yeah. So now uh, Tadashi and Kiori are looking at this and they're like, they're looking at the news and they're seeing, holy shit. This, now it's on mainland Japan or whatever. Like this is fucked up. So then they get a call from Miss uh, Yoshiyama and uh, she's like, you have to come right now. <laughs> like, I, so, something happened. You have to come right now. So they go there and uh, like, Kaori's freaking out. Like, I don't want to see that thing. Like, I don't want to, you know, whatever he's going to tell us about, I don't want to see it. And they're like, no, it's not that. It's something else. But you just have to come. And then they go in. And, like, basically, uh, like, he brings up where he smelled this thing before. You don't see exactly why, like, what we see later. But it's weird. He's, like, his, he's sitting at a table. His guy's arm, legs crossed. His legs, yeah, his legs are crossed. His arm, one of his arms, the arm that had the thing clamped on it. It's hidden under it's the hidden. table. It's hidden. He's acting very chill. So not like he's got something clamped on his arm. And then uh, he's like, you know, after like I thought about it, uh, I know where that smell came from. And like, or what, like what it, what it's from. And he's like, he goes into this whole fucking, now this is, this is where, this is where it, starts to get it starts to get a little weird. And this is what. I was telling John about this. This is like the difference between manga stories and like American comic stories. So like American comics might just be fine uh, like with the first part of this or this part where it's like, oh, there's deadly fish coming out of the water with legs growing on them. And then like this part, which, you know, possibly would have been in an American comic where it's like, okay, actually it's a government... Like, this is like a government <laughs> conspiracy, right? But then, this comic goes, like, way above and beyond. Well, we'll hit the weirder parts later, but it it goes, like, so much more <laughs> past this that I was like, wow, like, I did not see any of this coming. But that's, I was telling, I was telling John, like, manga does this thing where they, like, instead of it being like, oh, yeah, it's, a, you know, an alien species that crash landed and the government found it and made it a weapon. Manga's like, and also, uh, it's connected to the birth of, you know, some god deity, and that is actually uh, an evil spirit that is now possessed. Like, it's like, wait, wait, wait. Like, <laughs> it's all these extra layers. Yeah, all these extra layers that don't, I'm not going to say they don't need to be there, because it makes it, like, way interesting, but it's also like, okay, like, this is way more levels than i thought we were going to have on this story well, that's why i was saying man i were making a joke and i was like you know that makes sense because you think about like a lot of our a lot of our movies and indian horror movies too like you know it's like one thing two thing three thing maybe and that's done maybe but, three but max but three. they've they've already been making all this stuff and from everything with technology to this and it's like 
Now we already have the basic stuff. It's like that's why like their phones are always like they they were on like you know whatever iPhone now like three four years ago. Oh, they, yeah, they're, that technology. They're wise. so far ahead of us. Are all the <laughs> like the food in particular? Like we you know we we get these like oh these new cool like like uh you know a micro chicken or something you know yeah. something and it's like oh no they've had that for like three years. They were like testing and seeing That's how so cool it is. Years ago, and then yeah. <laughs> well, and then other, other the other thing is like you know if you look at something like Akira, like that was like what the fuck in 1980 or like 85 or whenever that yeah. came out. So like that was way far ahead. So you can only imagine like they just have to push the boundaries, and to push the boundaries you have to add like these different layers on it. That's what it feels like at least. So the like, good storytelling and everything is just different than. What I what I'm used to in American comics, where there's just like maybe one or two levels of depth or whatever on this storyline, especially for a horror comic. Yeah, I mean we're talking horror comics. You're usually like it's the devil or it's a bad guy with a knife or you know his mom yeah. saw him die in a pool and then she killed the camp, camp counselor that saw him drown. Or, you know, yeah, like- the thir- the thirty days of night was like. <laughs> He, they, yes. It's like the, so. The, there's 30 days of night there, so the vampires come. And how do you defeat the vampires? Oh, you got one of them has to become a vampire, and then that's, that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. That like, was there like, wasn't much. The groundbreaking thing was, oh, I'm going to become a vampire to kill the vampires. Yeah. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. So, and that was considered like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, <laughs> so this is like at this point, we've just seen like, I mean, my mind was already blown at. You know, land great white shark. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so this is like, this is where we get the levels starting to increase on storytelling. So the uncle's like, okay, uh, my grandpa or my dad told me about, you know, uh, this, the J- uh, Japan Imperial Army in w- World War II produced this germ as like germ warfare. And uh, they would give it to dogs and it would like mutate them so that they produce a shit ton of gas. And this is also where you see a little comedy in their weird fucking <laughs> like this dog. They show this dog and it's like on a table. You're supposed to feel like, you know, oh my God, they're like doing horse experimenting a dog. Yeah, experience. And then, but this dog has, you know, and then he's showing gas like coming out of its mouth like he's burping. He's also showing gas coming out of his asshole. So, yeah. like. <laughs> This dog is farting up a storm, and it's kind of funny, all right? I don't know, I don't know how else to put it. But they're like, oh, my God, we can use this. It's it, They said it smelled like rotting flesh, so they would release the animals onto ba- battlefields, and they would just fart and burp all over the place, and that would make the people sick, like the Americans that were yeah, attacking like, sick. Like, yeah, if you for close quarter stuff, they were saying it would work well, because, and it's funny, the panel they show, like, all these little dogs and cats, like, just... Running, running burping, through, burping, and farting. <laughs> yeah, running through a battlefield. All kinds of dogs here, like fucking Great Danes and like <laughs> just Beethovens or yeah. whatever. <laughs> to little so, chihuahuas. Yeah. And then like they're like, but the problem was they uh, the dogs would end up like getting paralyzed or the animals would get paralyzed after a time. They just like sitting on the battlefield farting. They wouldn't like continue running and yeah, you know. So then they're like, well, we got to build these like machines that we just like put them inside kind of little tanks with legs and then they run off the gas of the dog so i guess the animals would like fart inside of it and burp inside of it and then the gas would like pump the legs forward and would also use the gas to spread the gas all over the place or whatever yeah you know therefore making it stinky and so um (laughs) then they they were going to transfer these battle stink dogs or whatever across the stink pacific yeah <laughs> we need to make a comic stink tank dogs <laughs> uh, uh and so yeah i, I want to know that I, he needs to make a prequel to this just about the dogs from the dog's point of view about like farting up a storm and all this stuff so, uh, oh like uh um we three it'd be like we three or like plague dogs or something <laughs> like super fucked up animations about you know the, like those those weird animations about animals and like What's that? Uh, Once upon a time in the forest, or oh, those yeah. kind of things that came out like in the eight, late eighties and nineties, yeah. yeah, and just like all about like how horrible humans are to animals. So it's like it's like one of those, but like about the dogs farting on the battlefield. <laughs> so, but anyway, so then they're like transporting these dogs across like all the islands and everything in the Pacific, and. It was bombed where the carrier that had this and it went down and then that was like the last they heard of it. 
And they're like, wow, that's weird. I wonder what happened to that stuff or whatever. <laughs> so uh, then in the middle of that story, uh, Kaori is like, oh, excuse me. Uh, I have to use the restroom. Uh, where is your bathroom? And then she goes in there and then, I don't know why no one else notices, but she's got fucking boils all, all over her face that just like started to appear while he's telling the story. And um, she comes out and she sees or she smells something first just like always then she hears like tuk, 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 tuk. And she's like oh my god it's one of those things and then uh she like falls down passes out again screams and everything uh and then we see this thing like stalking down the hallway and then we find out what it is we're waiting for the fish and it is not a fish it is the gross bloated arm of of the of the uncle yes so he cut off his fucking arm there's tubes all over the place, and it's covered in boils. So you're like, oh. We know where this is going. Yeah, his arm's covered in boils. She had boils. She's infected, but without a, one of these things on her or whatever. So maybe the gas or when, I don't know. So somehow she's infected. So, And uh, it's just super fucked up. And then like the uncle's just like, oh, yeah, it's, don't worry about it. It's my arm. Yeah, I cut off my like, arm. Yeah, it's my pet now. Like, <laughs> This is like some fucking... <laughs> I don't know, weird shit. He, like, just... Oh, he just holds out his arm, and you just see, like, his sleeve limp in where, like, his arm used to be. And this is like, what the fuck? Like, this would be information you should have told us, like, before we showed up at as your fucking house. Yeah. And also, why is it, like, out and about? Like, you know, why... <laughs> like, you don't just let it run around now, like, Uncle Thing or whatever. Or like the, yeah, like the, the thing, hand, yeah. Yeah, the thing from the Adams family. Um, we'll call it Uncle Fester, though, because that fucking thing is festering. Because it's festering, it's mad. But yeah, basically he uh, did an in-depth uh, research on this thing, and yeah, basically, literally, when it grabs onto you, it starts uh, like a decaying process that makes your your body start to decaying, creating gases. These tubes come out and start like implanting wherever there's holes on you. Like when he cut off his arm, that whole end fat area is covered with like a, one of the big tubes. Because that's like where the gas is going to come out, I guess. Because that's the o opening, and then wherever the boils are in his arms that are like open sores, it's like tubes into that. So it's like a weird alive thing, but it's also so it's like an organic machine. Machine, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, they very kinda, cool idea, by the way. It is, and they kind of they kind of explain a little more later about it. But I, well, I mean, we could kind of say it now since they're yeah. So like. It's that that these apparently that the sunken battleship that these things like were under the water under the water like because they were like in the ocean and they got like all the bacteria and things that were when you got the dogs farting and yeah. the canister that are dead or whatever and whatever organisms like uh, were inside of them that caused that evolved yeah basically and so now they're they're kind of yeah like you said like it's an organic biomechanical like kind of creature thing yeah that also uh is able to uh self reproduce right and it turns like us humans and anything that's like alive into fuel fuel yep like so we're it's gas it's fuel and uh yeah <laughs> so yeah so the gas like the the gas is create that is is the uh, runs the, it also spreads these germs, and the germs are what causes you to get infected yeah. to have the gas. And so that's where we find out, like, oh, she's infected, but not everybody's infected. It looks like maybe the uncle's infected a little bit because he's starting to sweat and he's got like a weird, like the way he draws him after this. You're, you're, like, you're like, he's either crazy or he's infected or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, he doesn't look well. He does not look well. Uh, he looks pale. And his eyes are all sunken in and everything. And, and yeah, so, but he did just cut off his arm. So, you know, That's that true. that could also be it. But, um, yeah, so basically, like, we're, like it's just, it's downhill from here for, for Kaori. At this point, like, like, it's been a couple of hours. He's, like, letting her rest in the room. And Tadashi goes into her room and he's like, hey, uh, are you okay? Because he can smell, like, really bad coming from her room. And then, like, she's under the covers, and he moves the covers. And he's like, are there creatures in this room? And then, like, she's like, no, get out. It's fine. And then, like, 
he looks at her as he pulls the covers off and she is covered with fucking boils and like her body is just bloated yeah it, yeah it looks kind of it's like a fucked up version of that girl who eats the blueberry gum or whatever in uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka from Willy Wonka yeah yeah like she just violet you're turning violet yeah well you're turning boily you're turning or whatever. boily so, uh so yeah she's like burp, burping all over the place smelling you know making it smell in there um and she's like let me see myself i need to see what i look like because he's like oh my good god and she's like what what's wrong I'm like, and i'm like i think at this point i would know something was horribly yeah. wrong with my fucking face but she's i'm like, burping I gotta and, see and farting yeah yeah, that's the other thing. They show her like literally like brrr, like 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 <sighs> once again. I don't know if this was comedy or if it was just supposed to like he thinks it's horrific, but it's kind of funny. Just like the dog in yeah. the in the experiments, he just shows the way he draws the farts coming out of people. It's just funny looking, all right? Like <laughs> Yeah, it's like a perfect like like a outward stream yeah. out of both ends. Oh yeah, yeah, of gas. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and then like, so she's farting and burping and she's like, oh my God, get out of here. Don't look at me. I'm a monster. I'm hideous. Yeah. Uh, which she is. She's very, very terrifyingly looking in this. Like, I would not want, she looks like, I don't she know. looks like the, the, from the uh, Left 4 Dead games. She looks like one of the lobby. She looks like Brendel fly, dude. She looks oh, like she does look like Brendel fly. fly. That's, true. He, that's like, true. That's a good, about, like, when his skin's about to, to peel come off. off or yeah. Whatever. yeah. That's a good, yeah. And so. So, yeah, he's got all these fucking boils and, you know. She has it, all these boils. I'm, no, I mean, but he did and now. Oh, yeah. And, like, she, she she's has. got these now. And, yeah, that is creepy as fuck. So, then uh, then we then we get, like, the next chapter starts. Uh, we see everything is overrun. All of Japan's overrun. Fucking sharks and everything's. All these sea creatures. All these sea creatures. We get, like, one of the coolest creatures that comes out is, like, this whale. Like starts breaching the water on the beach, and they're like, "What the fuck is that?" And it's like a big blue whale. Yeah. So one of these machines was made itself big enough to harness a blue whale and like lift it up and bring it to the beach. And then as it's like coming out, it's like trying to lift this whale up, and then you see its legs buckle and it breaks, and it just like can't move anywhere. <laughs> So like basically it can't it like even this whale is so big it's like not a lot it's it's not made for something that big I guess, um, but yeah, it's 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 trying but it's stuck on the beach now and so that was kind of cool to see like this giant ass blue whale, um, which I don't even yeah. think it looks like a baby blue whale because like there's a van no, next to it and it doesn't look that no, big. no I don't think that's a blue whale that's the the like the Moby Dick style whale the um. Was it a sperm whale? Sperm whale, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know my whales. Well, no, that's I. I was looking at it and I was like again, and I was like, no, I think that's yeah. Is that that my good man is a sperm whale? I am a whale enthusiast. John's a big fan of sperm whales. I like whales. Okay, sperm whales. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyway, uh, so yeah. Anyway, well, it was, it can't, oh, it then it can't too. even hold up a bitch ass sperm whale. All right, it's not even that. Not cool. even a blue whale. Yeah, not even a blue whale. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the whole city's overrun, like people are running they're freaking the fuck out. Everybody's either getting infected or turning or getting pinched by these things in yeah. places. And then they're getting like, you know, taken over by them and shit. So, uh, Kaori's like, I'm going to kill myself. And Tadashi's like, no, you can't do it. And she like tries to kill herself. And I, I like it her because I thought this conversation was fun because it comes back technically because she's like, she's like. I, I'm so hideous and whatnot, but don't you don't you lie to me. You would leave me, right? You would go find a prettier woman if I say like this, right? And he's like, "What are you talking about? No, <laughs> you, you look great." And I'm like, "Dad." And she's like, "Please don't leave me. Don't leave me. You you probably would like go for your uncle's lab assistant or something." And he's like, he's "Like, where did that come from?" Yeah, he's like, "Calm down." Like, <laughs> but yes, yes, I would because you look <laughs> fucking hideous. And so, uh, oh, she <laughs> she also looks like. Uh, like uh oh man what is it uh i don't know there's like the the mom from uh i think it's either texas chainsaw massacre or hills have eyes where it's like oh my my, my oh my. yeah like whatever the fuck just just giant gas bloated crazy looking fucking lady so uh and she's all and yeah she's just like some crazy jealous girlfriend too right now which is even more which weird. is yeah she yeah it's obviously Get everything is going crazy. Yeah. So he's like, Oh my God, like let me call my uncle and see what's going on. And she's you know, he 
he's like, I don't know, bring her here. Maybe we can help her out or something. So, um, he's like, he goes to, to get her after he calls his uncle and he hears something coming out of her room. She's not answering her name or to her name. And he opens the door to her room and she like had tried to kill herself. She, she tried to hang herself by like, I don't know if it's a ceiling fan or if it's the light. I think it's just a light. I think it's just the light. Yeah. But this is another, you know, comedy moment. I'm assuming. Yeah, she wrapped it around her neck and she's hanging there. But but she's farting because she's full of gas. Yeah. She's like going so in she's circles. pushing herself with her farts around the room, in the in like a tether ball kind of. Yeah, basically. Uh, <laughs> That's a good. Ex- <laughs> and like and because of that, her like you know the ro- or the electrical cord snaps because it like weakens because she's moving it so much with her gases. Yeah. And then <laughs> and so she falls and he's like, fuck, I, I'm just gonna like take you to my uncle's or like get an ambulance or something. I gotta get help. So he like throws her on his back and he just like runs outside. And like we said, everything is now like crazy. There are no like services or help or anything. Yeah, there's people dead in the street that have been trampled by the like the things because uh, they've got like fucking stabby holes in them from like the fucking crab legs. Yes. And then there's like you see like fish and sea creatures all around just, like, running around like crazy. Yeah. And also, he's walking, and we see, like, a little shadow of a fucking... Like a, <laughs> like a fucking fin coming out behind a car. And all of a sudden, it's like, remember me, bitch? Surprise, like, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, like, this fucking great white shark that we thought was dead. Maybe it's another one. I don't know. Maybe it's his brother. Uh, <laughs> I will avenge my brother. Yeah. yeah. Uh, starts chasing him with her on his back. And at this point, I'd be like, sorry, bitch. Uh, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I th- throw yeah. the shark and hit Yeah, keep exactly. Running. Keep running. So, but he's, you know, he's a straight arrow. You know, he's like, no, hang on. We can do this together. And this thing is like right this, behind him. This is the kind of woman that, or man that all women want and that we obviously could not be. But somehow we still were able to get married. Exactly. Well, I don't know about. <laughs> I mean, I'm like this guy for sure. Well, I mean, I of course I would save my wife too. What sure. Are you talking about John, <laughs> just admitting <laughs> to throw your wife to a great white. Wow. Okay. She's uh, she has told me many times that if anything Sarah would be running with you on her back. That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So quick, I have to say real fast, just uh, a quick side story specifically about my wife, because we've talked about like you know visiting like animal sanctuaries or like you know, rehabilitation centers for, especially for dumb people that take pets that they shouldn't have, you know, for, or take animals they shouldn't have for pets. Um, we're, and she was like, well, maybe we, we could go, uh, um, to one of the, the big cat ones, not like, you know, Tiger King or anything like one of the like actual established ones. Strong Tiger King. <laughs> um, and I was like, and I, and I was like, mm, I think that's too much for me. Like I would go and they would smell my fear a little and then I would be done. And she's like, I would be lucky enough to die that way. I would just put my face in their face and like, just rub, like, it's okay. You can eat me. And I'm like, yeah, okay. People sure, say honey. that until it fucking until, bites <laughs> on. Until it like, your face. Kill this fucking cat. <laughs> Get your gun. And she's and like, text. she's like, no, it's okay. It would be a good way to go. I was like, okay, yeah. honey. All right. Well. <laughs> Circle that's why that's why you are you can go with your sisters i'm yeah, just one of those yeah, i'll exactly. stay outside get the fuck out of here so. i wish you the best of luck and i'll hopefully i'll yeah. see you when you've all seen that that video of that was it, uh that family that was in like some one of those parks and like the mother-in-law gets out of the car and like was arguing or something <gasps> and then that right. fucking tiger's like gotcha bitch and then like <laughs> pulls her away and then the husband's like do i do i go get her i mean she was just yelling at me or no, it's no. mother-in-law, so <laughs> I mean, like, do I, I guess I have to go get it. And he like kind of half runs after her. It's like, oh, she's gone. Also, what are you going to do against the tiger? I don't know, but I don't die from another tiger. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. so he's going to drop her and then come to you. He's like, well, she's already dead. I can eat her later. Yeah. Or, yeah, his friend's going to jump out at you. So. Yeah, I don't want to be there. So, yeah, I would not follow. Your wife is trying. Do you have life insurance, John? <laughs> we do. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Don't don't fall for it. I've seen these movies before. So anyway, anyway, we would say we would we would save our wives. There's this whole yes, we would. Of course, we would for the insurance. Wait, what? (laughs) Um, I don't know if you can pay out insurance if there's like a plague of gas. You know, monsters that takes over the world. Yeah, are they are they going to cover land shark walking? I don't think so. That's not in my. They'd be like, I'm sorry, that's not part of your policy. (laughs) Land sharks are not covered. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, this great white fucking chases him all over town. He does a fan fucking tastic job. He's really good at evading. He's like, parkour. I mean, we're talking <laughs> jumping over cars. Parkour. 
Yeah, parkour, all hard, hard, parkour, hardcore. All right, this, this, this dude, this dude deserves a goddamn medal uh, for best boyfriend ever or whatever. For even a girl who parkour. apparently hasn't even kissed him, Bailey. So yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. So uh, this thing almost gets him, but he finally makes it to his uncle's, you know, fence, fenced-in house. And I'm surprised this fucking fence stops a great white. But basically, he jumps the fence. The great white barely misses him, and then. The great white's like, oh, there's a fence. No, I guess. Yeah. It's like a shark cage, I guess, maybe. Uh, yeah. I'll get you next time. Uh, yeah, I get, yeah, he's like, ah. I'll be, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be outside this gate whenever you want to come out. I'll be watching. <laughs> yeah, so, so anyway, they go to this uncle's house, and the uncle's like, oh, yeah, like, uh, why don't you leave her with me, and, like, I'll, I'll take care of her. Uh, you know, you go get help or whatever. See, see what's out there or whatever. So... Uh, Tadashi goes and he's looking around town. Uh, he sees like, there's no help. There's, there's military people or like police. They're just shooting these fucking things. They don't know what's going on. Yeah. He's like trying to, you, you see, he's kind of like, it shows a couple of panels of him, like avoiding the great white, like trying to hide yeah, from yeah. it. And he goes, ah, what's that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, what's then that? he gets attacked by a giant squid. Yeah. As you do. And he's like, "Hey, come here, boy!" And he grabs his, yeah, he wraps his tentacles around him. Yeah. But then at this part, I this is where I, I kind of w- was trying to, because like he drags him away, and then um, he's like up higher up on like a, I thought it was a building, but I think it's a, a runoff for like a water stuff. It's like a collection area, and the one of the tentacles. I, snaps. I don't know if that's what that is, because it looks like a chemical factory or something. Okay. A refinery of some sort, maybe. Maybe I, I just where wherever he falls, it looked like it was like. Because there were like some tubes that just, go in. I, it could have just been like the runoff area around it for water or whatever. But like, uh, anyway, like yeah, basically he he was about to get fucking murdered by the squid, and the squid's running with him, dragging dragging Tadashi around. And luckily, that squid's got some bitch ass little tentacles because he gets caught on a wall, and then the tentacle snaps, and then he falls over the wall. Into I didn't this, know if like, it was that or maybe the the decay. Uh, that might be it too, but it's still. But yeah. still, either way, he gets away. Either way, and that was the other thing I was willing to overlook this. But obviously, if these things are dead, how's that shark chasing? Yeah, how's that shark? Well, not how the shark chasing him, but how's it like? Why does it care to eat, or why does the the squid's legs move? You know what I'm saying? You know, like I get like the gases are making the legs run and shit, and then maybe that thing's sensing it. But how is it controlling the nervous system of the? Yeah, I'm bit straight making the shark be like, I want to eat these people. Exactly. So he falls into like, we'll say it's a uh, retention pond, basically, for water or something. Uh, and he falls in and there's just all these fucking gross little fish and cockroaches and other bugs and shit in here that are all, uh, you know, what's it called? Turned or whatever. Like they've got little legs and yeah. stuff and he's freaking the fuck out. He's like, ah, and he can't get out. I mean, there's no way out of this thing. He just basically gives in. And falls in there and just like, oh, I'm dead. And so it's, it's pretty, uh, I mean, to, to have no ladder or anything in there is pretty unsafe. That's not code, right? There's no ocean. <laughs> there's no ocean in Japan already. So, um, but yeah, so he's just chilling there and then he has some kind of vision. And this is where the third layer yes. kind of comes in <laughs> a little bit where we see he starts seeing all this gas kind of coming out, coming out of this pit because he's sitting in a pit of, decaying baby fish and bugs and all this stuff. So, uh, and they're just trapped too. So like he's just sitting in there like, I don't know, chilling. I don't know what that feels like. Maybe it's really relaxing. Maybe it's like a, a float spot. A little or massage. Like a float tank. A float tank. <laughs> with like a moving bed underneath. It. So, uh, <laughs> squirming. That sounds horrible. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> but yeah, he starts seeing like little, he sees the gas, and then the gas starts, like, forming. It's kind of like when you look at the clouds in the sky. He starts seeing things in the gas. And basically, he starts seeing, like, his faces. Fucking faces. And, like, skeleton. Like, creepy faces. Things. Yeah. And then, basically, he's like, what? They look like ghosts. The professor said the germ was developed by the Japanese army during the war. So, is the gas made up of the spirits of the dead? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did we just? What? How did you make that jump? <laughs> well, how does the professor said the germ was developed by the Japanese army during the war? Dot dot dot. So the gas is made up of the spirits of the dead. That is a giant jump that I don't understand how 
this guy Tadashi is a smart motherfucker apparently. But so we've added another layer of these. The gas is not just fart gas. It is actually it's spirit fart the gas. Spirits of the dead of everybody the gas has killed potentially. So because we know this because we see the arm, like the gas starts to reach for his arm and pull him out of this pit. And one of the main arms that is reaching for him is looks like Kaori. Kaori. And then he he's like, you're beautiful. He's like, you're beautiful again. <laughs> he's like, you're beautiful. Like white gaseous Kaori. And then he wakes up and he's in a hospital. Yeah. And so then this is like, Hmm. So like, was this like a fever dream? Yeah. Or- yeah. O- only because we've seen a little bit of that because like when she saw the fish earlier, uh, when she thought she saw the fish, but it was a little cockroach. So there's been a tiny hints of that. Maybe, maybe there's a little bit of that. Yeah. And so he's up or he was in the hospital. He wakes up. He's like, Oh my God, where am I? They're like, you're in the hospital. And it seems like because there's pe- nurses in the hospital and stuff and he's in the hospital, maybe it's a little different than time than where he was before. I think, well, yeah. You see, he's been out for a month. A month. So he was out for a month. They're like, oh, yeah, a lot of those fish went back to the sea. We started, like, the military came and started taking, kicking ass or whatever, taking names. So then we see, like, a fucking tank chasing down, like, a marlin. And the marlin's like, bah! like And the tank's like, like, it's, like, shooting at it or whatever. And so, basically, it's kind of like martial law or whatever, you know, has been going on. Yeah, because they're still fighting them, but they're, I guess they're on the upswing. Maybe. Yeah, they're, they're beating these fucking, you know, it kind of reminds me of, uh, like, like, cause it's a kind of like insects taking over. It's kind of like uh, Starship Troopers or some shit too. Or like, you know, the bug has taken over or whatever. Like, I've seen the creatures, but I've still never seen that movie. Oh, I, I've I've seen I've seen like clips, but I've never movie seen night, that movie. movie night. We'll, we'll hit it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, he goes back to his uncle's spot, and he's like, "Oh my god, I want to see her. Is she okay?" He's like, "Uh, I mean, now now she's gone. Yeah, she's gone." And then like he stays there. And he's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe she's dead or whatever." And then uh, Miss Yoshiyama comes in and is like, I can't, I can't bear it anymore. Like, I, like, your, your, your uncle lied to you. He, she's not dead. She's in here. Let me show you. Let me show you. And so, like, she's, she says specifically that she is still alive. Now, I don't know if I would call that alive. <laughs> but when he walks through this door, we see uncle, in all his infinite science wisdom, has built a new body. A better body. <laughs> a body that looks a lot like a um, more badass version, I guess, of the I old took the old machine. Grandpa design machines. Yeah, the World War II machine. And I made a better version. He's going to call it the eye whatever of it, you know? <laughs> the eye legs. The eye legs. <laughs> it's, it's the Mac version of, you know, it's a sleek aluminum or whatever. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Like all <laughs> the of- stainless steel version of this uh of these old battleship you know metal organisms or whatever and it is like the 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 main part of it's real sleek and it's got some like exhaust tubes for the gas and it's got these horrible hoses so Just, like, yeah in this one th- so these ones or this one has a lot more like it's just it's more graphic than the other ones were, at least. It shows yeah. Kaori, and that maybe because it's Kaori and we know her, so it's supposed to be more graphic. But the, there's two hoses shoved in her mouth. And then there's one shoved in her butt. And then, I mean, and it fucking, like, it doesn't hide anything. Like, no, she, it shows her she, It her looks butt. like she's a turkey on a platter. Like, like she's doing, um, like, turtle shell yoga pose or something. Yeah. And, uh, and... And then there's like straps over the top yeah, of her holding, holding her, her back down. And then there's a tube in her butt and there's two tubes in her mouth. And you're like, Jesus Christ. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. There's one of the most fucked up images I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then as as he's like, what the fuck? His uncle walks in and is like, who gave you permission to be in here? <laughs> How dare you walk into my laboratory? And he's like, oh, uh, you weren't supposed to see this, but... Uh, I made her better. Like, I made a better machine for her. You know? It's fine. Uh, and so, she's actually got an on and off button now and stuff. And so, he he turns her on and then he's like, look at this. And he, he explains, like, basically, uh, he, like, took the design and made it better and made it, you know, bigger, stronger, faster, whatever. I built it to prove my theory that, that uh, this body could be used as a fuel source. Yeah. 
So Uncle's fucked up. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, what, I mean, he's the evil scientist. But as he turns it on, uh, Kaori's like, Ma, fuck you. And just like stabs him with one of her legs, stabs the uncle, and then like runs away. So the uncle's like, oh my God, you know, stabs him, I don't know, in the torso. I don't yeah. know. It kind of looks like the top of the stomach area, but it could be like a lung or something too. But it didn't look good, but she was like, fuck this good. shit, I'm out. And she runs out and then, you know, uh, Tadashi like runs after her. And so, like we said, the, the street is still full of, you know, things. Not as full. Like, there's just dead, rotting stuff. But there's still wandering, you know, uh, human or fishless uh, machine, uh, organic machines, walking around with their Venus fly traps out, waiting for someone to, like, get close enough for it to snatch them. And, like, so he's he's walking, and he sees this guy who's like, I don't feel so, bruh, you know, like, he's got and he's like, hey, starting. have you, did you see a girl walk through here with, like, a machine that didn't look like, it's kind of like the ones that you saw, but newer, and the guy's like, bruh, I think she went that way, <laughs> and then, like, as he's talking, he, like, falls and stumbles into one of these fucking machines, and, like, then, like, you see, like, oh, man, yeah, it just, you just see at night, apparently, these fucking things come out. And there's just all these humans that, like, are wrapped up, being held by these, like, Venus fly traps. They look like little baked hams or whatever. Yeah, it's horrible. I, he goes down the, sh- the street, and he thinks he falls upon her, but it's not. We, it's, it's like, another one, it's a, yeah. yeah. it's, like, the it's first old human, ones, yeah. but in the, the more organic, the, the the organic ones from the ocean. But they're, you know, they've, they're they a little bigger ones now. And, and they're all human. They're all, they're all for humans, not for yeah. fish anymore. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess they like make new ones of themselves that are for whatever prey they're. I guess so. Yeah, it's, it said that they were uh, self, um, uh, re- like they're basically re- able to, to yeah, yeah, create or re improve themselves. So. Yeah, because we see later on, also in the street, they like combine. So there would be like a giant one, kind of like the one that had the whale, but then there will be like twenty little ones that are all, all the the people are still on them and then the now this big one has tubes going to all of those ones as well it's just like a it's, fucking mass of horrible it's fucking terrifying yeah body you know horror or whatever it's fucking crazy uh and so you know he's still looking for Kaori. he's going through the city i love we actually see someone they like, graphically fall on one this is again where we yes. see like some graphics though because someone falls on one and then, like, you just see the tubes go out and into his mouth and his butt, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, yes. And she's like, well, uh, that guy, that, that I mean, guy's... he was already dead because he was infected or whatever. Yeah, but. but... <laughs> uh, and, and this is another thing. Uh, uh, Tadashi, like, he walks, and he steps on one of these things. So it's kind of like, the gas is everywhere, right? So it's kind of like fog, like spirity looking fog or whatever. And so he accidentally steps on one of these things. It clamps on his foot, and he, like, is able to pry it off. But it, you know, cuts his feet. And so, like, we're, we, he's been cut a couple times by these he things. He got stabbed he in his hand early. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have any issue with these things. Um, and then we see, like, the army shows up and they're, like, um, coming at him. Or not coming at him, but coming at some of these things. Um, just, like, shooting him. And that's allowing them to burst so they can't hold the gas. And then that, like, releases. That makes basically makes them unable to run and all this stuff. So that's kind of how they're dealing with these things or whatever but then like i said that's where we see some of these like giant mass humans that are like piled up on this bit like 14 humans piled up on a big one of these things yeah so um yeah it's just like the only way the government can do anything is just shoot it right (laughs) so uh and like the like we said like the gas is like literally will come alive and sometimes and just grab people and throw it on the pile and so it's kind of like the gas is like we said it's this organism but it's also a spirit spirit spirits sentient, of people or so i don't weird. fucking know exactly but it's, it's like that level right so um so yeah and then he's like he's walking and he's like <laughs> yeah, this, like, is, this is where it gets even weirder. What? What is this? And this, then we get to this chapter called The Death Stench Circus. So, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess we taught Japan well after World War II, but we taught them how to capitalize, right? <laughs> we taught them about capitalism because apparently in all this horror and body horror, someone that owned a circus was like, hey, I got an idea. I have found like 
I don't know if he was playing what what song he was playing or something. But he found a frequency, a tune, you know that that these things will like move to. It's like whatever it's frequency of the spirit yeah. realm or something. But like he basically found this tune, and he like. <laughs> He has people that are full of gas with like propped up with like flutes in their mouth and it's like boo, boo, like you know, and they're playing this song that's like boo, 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 you know, whatever. I'm just doing like circus music or whatever. But, but like, whatever the song is. Yeah, but yeah. It, I mean it's very much it makes me think of like the um the scene in uh Snow White where the, the air is like pushing through the pipes and whatnot. Yes. And it's like but it's like, yeah, so they're sitting there. The, the instruments are pushed up to the lips and stuff, and so the gas is just happens to be blowing at the right, uh, you know, octave or whatever for those, and they have their hands in just the right spots. Right. And, it, and so, like, and then we see, like, like literally there's, you know, an elephant on one of these things walking around, and they're all walking in circles, and there's people on them, and they're doing acrobatics on tight ropes and shit. And this, there's one guy who's, like, uh, you know, that's pretty good, guys. You know, good job practicing for today. Like, and he's obviously infected because he looks all weird. He's so weird, but he's like the ringmaster or whatever. But yeah, and he's like, oh, a visitor, and he's all crazy or some shit. I don't know why the government hasn't shot this fucker, but he looks like death. By the way, he looks like the crypt keeper. Or yes, Very, he looks like. Oh, this is what he looks like. He looks like there's an episode of Buffy called Hush, where these there's these guys called the gentlemen, and they're like take away everybody's voice in the city and uh and so no one can talk and they just go around and murder people but they float and they have like these fucking like creepy fucking faces i remember that one. Oh, it's a good episode but uh i think it's in season four yeah it's in season four it was like it was like it was like it happens at the beginning enough so that I was like, I don't like the season. And then that happened. I'm like, okay, I'm in. Like, you know, like <laughs> it was a good enough episode that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm down for this. But uh, yeah, he looks like one of He's those. terrifying. Like the gentleman in that thing, uh, in, in the Buffy episode. And so he's like, check out this fucking awesome circus I made out of these things. Like, all you have to do is find, like, uh, use you use the gas for yourself or whatever. And now I have a circus. And now people can pay see these awesome things like you know be in my circus and so uh yeah he's, he's got all this everything the circus has he's got a cannonball man that's getting launched by some of this gas because he like figured out how to hook it up he i thought he said he put people in the two in, yes, the, in the drum yeah he put people in drums and then put the tubes in the cannon and then the cannon shoots people out of it with, that's freaking with the crazy gas or whatever. yeah so this is weird fucking this is like i said this is another level of this weird thing and so uh yeah, basically, he just he's freaked out by this. Like, there's uh, one scene where there's a fire breather, and he, like, breathes out the gas. I guess the gas is flammable because it's, like, methane-ish or something. But then, like, he blows it out, and then all these spirits, like, faces are on fire, and they look like they're in pain. Yeah. They kind of chase Tadashi a bit around. And uh, and then he's like, and wait for the, the spectacle of all spectacles. Look at this one I found. And he pulls it out, and it's... Uh, um, Kaori. Kaori. And so it's her and her new body, and she's not being very cooperative. So they have to like pull her out like it's a fucking elephant or like Dumbo's mom or something. Yeah, shit. it's horrible. And like he's like, oh my God. And and um, then Kaori, seeing him, is like, free, starts freaking out. Uh, she is able to like stab the guys or whatever, like break away. And then. <laughs> And they're like, they're freaking out. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to get uh, infected because I got like shot like with, I got stabbed and now I'm shot with all this like, she like shot like goop or whatever out of her like exhaust ports or some shit. So they got covered with like whatever goo. And so they're all worried they're going to get infected, which is good for them. They should be. And then she runs away and he's like, no, don't run away. <laughs> Wait for me. And then he's, he's like, able, he, he jumps on her, pushes the button that like shuts her off. So he got her to stop. And he, then he brings her back. I don't know how the fuck he... He just, like, throws her over his shoulder. In the machine, he, like, drags her. Drags her back to the house. I'll free you. So that shark never showed up again. <laughs> so that's true. I was like... It's hey, been a month, so that true. shark probably gave up that yeah, point, finally. Or he exploded from the gas, finally. True, pr- probably. So he shows up, and then we see uh, Miss, uh, Miss Yoshi uh, Yama... Oh, well, I, <laughs> I almost it. said it. Yoshima, uh, wow. Yoshiyama. Yoshiyama answers the door and she's like, 
She looks fucking beat, like she's tired, maybe a little sick. And he's like, is my uncle here? And she's like, well, he is, but he isn't. And then she breaks down in tears. And then we see that, uh, like, they, they, she's like, we'll bring her in and, like, we'll try to get, yeah. like, the stuff out of her she's face. She's like, he died from his, his yeah, cavity. Yeah, she, she basically said he died. And then, like, then she tries to, like, remove, like, they, they're working on um, Kaori and... Uh, they're like, okay, well, let's re- remove the tubes and everything because she seems to be alive. She's responding to like seeing him, even though she looks dead and her eyes are white and yeah, she's on this machine or whatever. But so uh, they, oh, this is so fucking creepy. They start pulling the tubes out of her mouth. They even cut like he because the the uncle sewed these tubes into her face, like into her mouth. So like they have to cut the stitching. Then they start to pull, and I guess her body is rotting, so it fucking pulls her fucking lips off of her face. Yeah. Oh. It starts to rip the skin off of her face. It's like, oh, my God. Ah, 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 ah. Like, hold on, hold on. Hold yeah. on, let me go staple that back on or whatever. Like, oh, we'll take care of that later. Well, super glue, everything's fine. Yeah, and so they're like, I guess, you know. Like, she didn't want to kiss you anyway, right? Yeah, she is dead, I guess, because she's still there. But he's like, I want, to, I want her to be free, though. So, like, he's trying to break her out of there, and then they're like, well, like, what's that noise? And they hear like, dum, 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 dum. And like what? And they're like, it's coming from lab two. And he's like, lab two? Lab number two. And, and then like, they go in there. Uh, he has to break into it because it's locked. And he looks up. After he hears the noise, he looks up and he sees the fucking uncle is on like a giant fucking like upside. He's sleeping upside down, but his body is hooked to another one of these ones that he made. He looks more like a cockroach. On this one, the way that his body is faced yeah. or whatever, uh, and he he has tied himself to like this machine that is part of a blimp. So his gases were filling up this blimp the whole time, and now it's ready to take off. And that's what that noise was. So uh, the blimp comes out. Uh, it sees the. I guess it sees the Miss um, Yoshi Yoshiyama. Yama. And and the the Tadashi. the nephew and so I feel like he the, the uncle's like oh I'm jealous because they're together or something. I mean, well, it's been a month, so he doesn't know. I mean, they probably and you know, yeah, they totally fucked. Obviously, tell me <laughs> they didn't. But like, look, like, yeah, it, just, it was just like, huh? The doctor seems angry at the seeing them together, and so it just starts shooting stuff at them, like from its like exhaust ports, and so. Uh, then, um, they, she even says like, oh, he must be jealous, like thinking that we were together or something. And they're like, that's ridiculous. Like we were not together. And then, uh, he like, he flies off. Yeah. He tries to get in, but they get, they get back in the building and he's too big, obviously. So he flies off, but this is great because so she's, so Miss uh, Yoshiyama is in his hands because he's like pushing her away from the window. And uh, Kaori looks is looking at them like just happens to be facing them her dead eyes, and she sees him like kind of holding her slightly, not even like like hugging her, just like arms on her arms, like yeah. her his hands are like holding her supportively. Yeah, like a, a supportive like, but still a little bit away. Yeah, like a. Oh my god, we saw something horrible, but also we're not together and are not like on friendly terms or whatever. Like, yeah. So then she starts crying because she like I, like tears literally come. Either it's tears or her eyes get melty or something. I don't know. But like, I think it's tears rotting. And so, <laughs> but it seems like tears. And uh, so she pulls out her hand. Yes. Keep in mind, she's fucking dead. So no, that's why I'm saying I don't think she is fully dead. And that's I don't know. Got tears. We saw her spirit earlier. Uh, that's why. Yeah, but it, again, then he was in the hospital. Maybe it was a fever dream. That's well, there's a couple levels to this. We don't know. We don't they know. leave a little bit of mystery to yeah, it. It's part of the horror. So, uh, <laughs> so her, she pulls her hand out of the strap, turns her machine on, and then is like, "You fucking bitch, I'm gonna kill you!" And so she tries to like kill uh, Miss uh, Yoshiyama and uh, goes after her and succeeds. And uh, chasing her down. And then, well, like, she's chasing her down. And then, like, the uncle comes out of nowhere. It's because he chases her out of the building. And is like, ha-ha, I got you, bitch. And, like, turns out he's, the the body he's made 
like it can clamp on both sides. So it's like a Venus flytrap on both sides, yeah. on the belly and the top. So, so we, it's got him on top, and it swoops down and, sw- and picks her up from the bottom. And you now know, they'll be together forever. They're together forever, hoses in her butt and mouth, and then, <laughs> and then uh, that's it. And then uh, now he's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you know that happened." And she kind of is running away, and then she just gets outside of like this compound, and she is automatically surrounded by all the old robots. So all these old, older. Uh, versions right she's this new she's the new hotness hotness and these old busted busted. yeah these old (laughs) busted you know other human robots that are from they're built from like old sea ships and everything and they just start fucking stabbing her to death just and so uh it's pretty much they just murder her in front of him uh take her away and uh never to be seen again and then and this was funny this again (laughs) The yeah, comedy well, element. The comedy element, yeah. They have more of the creatures pulling out that giant cannon from the circus. Right. He's walking through the city yelling Kaori's name, you know, trying to find her, even though, like, she was taken away and stabbed to death by all these other ones. And what does he see? He hears, like, some weird noise. And you're like, burp, 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 burp. and then, like, <laughs> we see this giant cannon, the cannon that was in the, the, the uh, tent, being pulled by many of these. Uh, machine people uh, that are all like de- decaying and everything. Honey baked ham she- she- people. Exactly. Uh, and so then we see that shoots a body at the blimp <laughs> and takes the blimp down. It's like, get that other one up there. Yeah. And the reason why the uncle was a blimp is because he was like, oh, we're going to infect the rest of the world or whatever. Like, we're going to take on, like, I'm going to get back in America for what they did. To us in WWE. Back in WWE yeah. too. <laughs> and so uh, he's he was like planning on, I guess, floating just across the ocean or whatever and uh, taking the fight back to them. And so uh, then we, sh- I love this. He shoots down the blimp. Great shot for a dead guy, by the way. And yeah. He fucking murders or mur- hit that, hit that blimp. No problem. The blimp pops. But what happens? He's like, ha ha, bat wings, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. and he pulls out his fucking Batman, the animated series bat wings that just happen to be under his cape or whatever. And he floats Yeah, they off. like pop out and he, he just keeps floating. He just glides off. <laughs> then, you know, he, we, we, I mean, we had seen people earlier that looked like the, the military was winning. But now he goes over this hill and we just see just fucking an army, like a sea of these fucking giant robots that have like 40 50 100 people you know all in them powering them so it looks like maybe they're not dead um or maybe they're not winning and then uh while he's looking over the hill he just happens to run into some other people some actual humans who are like oh my god we're so happy we found another person did you know uh like they're not man-made basically what it is like basically we kind of spoil what they are because we thought they were man-made from the war earlier, but it wasn't the scientists that made them. It's uh, there was the original machines that the scientists made, but like we said, the the gas bacteria themselves like be- mutated and became the able to make machines. So they're like, you know, organic machines. Yeah, or whatever. gas synthesized with the wrecks and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, and science stuff. So <laughs> he's been walking for a while trying to find Kaori, and he basically. Finally catches up with her. Her, uh, she's dead now. Like her body is totally. Yeah, she's definitely a carcass now. Yeah, in this machine. And this machine was, you could tell it's just been like stabbed to death or whatever. Uh, and they're like, oh well, uh, we'll catch you up later. You know, like, <laughs> like see ya, uh, buddy. And uh, so, uh, I don't know if these other guys are like scientists or. Whatever, I, I think but- yeah, they sound like they're scientists because that one guy said they're from the uni- a university. Or yeah, something. maybe they're students. Or something. I think they're like come with us and like maybe you seem like maybe you're immune. We can help like sa- we can basically help save the world. And he's like, yeah, c- I'll catch up with you later. And then he's I love this. He sits down on the ground. Yeah, like puts his hand on her and it's like. You don't smell anymore. Yeah, you don't smell. You anymore, don't have Kaori. to smell anymore. It's fine. <laughs> You're free from the smell, and that's the end. And that's the end. I was like, "Wow, that's not how I thought it was going to end." <laughs> Just you know, no happy ending. Yeah, I love the it. uncle <laughs> got away, flew away with his bat wings or whatever. So like his gliding. So I don't think he made it to America, but you know, 
He, he, glided he definitely gliding for a while. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. I mean. And we don't what know. a fucking story. And you said there's an anime of this, too, or something? I, I, I happen to take a gander after the fact. And, yeah, apparently there is a, uh, I think there's an actual animated version of this. So I definitely well, want to check it out now. I do, too. Uh, I want to see what <laughs> The shark do. scenes specifically. Yes, yes. We need to watch it. So, uh, yeah. But on that note, John, what did you think of this? I, for my first, like, real manga, like, it was really cool. I love the horror element. I totally am down to read some more. Things like this. Yeah. Um, I, again, I don't know why I didn't think that manga would be just as cool as some of the anime I've seen. So, because, like, yeah, I've seen some some weird horror anime. There's one that's called uh, Elven Lead or Laid. And this girl has, like, these... She's, like, worked on in a lab, and then this spirit takes over her, and she's got, like, these ghost arms that pop out that nobody else can see, but they pop out, and they can, like, murder people. Murder people. <laughs> it's really cool. Sweet. But, yeah, so again, just some you know, crazy weird horror stuff. And yeah, this was awesome. I loved it. It was a great story. I totally would be down if there was more of this. I know you said that there's a couple more. From He's got three him. other books that are of yeah. the, they look the same. I think they're just separate horror stories. Well, his art is fantastic too. So Oh my God. It's I don't know how so long creepy. it took him to do this, but it is super detail, super creative. I mean, it's very, very like you can tell it's him instantly. Like yeah. that's one of the things I noticed about him. Because I never read his stuff either. I would just see passing by on the bookshelf. I'd be like, who's that guy? Because his stuff looks so different. Like, so it's Junji Ito? Yeah, Junji Ito. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. And, like, seriously, like, the super detailed work, like, it is always pristine. And then if it's something that's a, a more, like, of a, a scenery scene, it may be, like, dashed or lined or penciled. But it's still so cool looking, and you know exactly yeah. what it is. It's really cool. Yeah. It just, you know, he's a master of art and all this stuff. So a lot of those manga guys are. Like, I don't, you know, their pace for a lot of the stuff, like, a lot of their, like, manga stories are done, I think they're done, like, weekly. Like, they do, like, sections weekly. Like, yeah. each, each chapter in the mangas will be, like, because usually, like, a manga, I think they're called Takubans, which mm -hmm. are, like, a trade. They... Have like five sections in them, right? But how often do they come out? I think I think weekly they put out a. Do so they come you know, out in like fat phone book that are like of the like you know how like we come out monthly with issues, right? Yeah. So the, I think they come out either monthly or bi bi monthly or maybe weekly with these fat like newspaper like really cheaply made newspaper phone books that are just stories and and. They have chapters every time in them, or something like that. So, oh, so it may not be, it may not be like a single. It's issue like an anthology. It's an anthology of like several of peoples. all the single issues. Oh, so they they that's why like Dragon Ball or whatever will come out and it'll just be like one one section in that whole phone book, and then the next one comes out, and then the next section. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, like, if that's, I mean, if that thing is three, you know, three hundred pages or whatever. Yeah, I don't know if this one came out like that because there wasn't. There's chapters in this, so maybe it did. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know. This isn't a traditional, this like not a ongoing true. story. So I just I'm talking about the main on like, like when you're talking about like Dragon Dragon Ball, Ball or yeah, those or Sailor Moon or yeah, yeah. they come they out. Just, you go in the store and you see the shelf and there's like oh there's like 50 of these already. Right, but I <laughs> but on that like I said they come out. It's like they publish a big anthology every month or every week or whatever. Yeah, that's like cheaply made so that it doesn't cost that much but you get a thousand pages of that's cool different comics 20 pages of each comic or whatever in there that's cool and then and each each week it's the next version or the next part the of next that story part. that's so, cool and you get several stories to read from different okay yeah, so you that's cool which ones you want even and all of it's cheap or whatever so um that's nice that's cool yeah I think it's a it's an interesting model as far as like you know. I, it makes me think of like the Sunday funnies where you have a bunch yes. together in one, but sometimes those you know those sometimes those do have connecting stories. Right. Yes. That's it's, cool. very, it's very much like that kind of thing. Or maybe like the old uh, school, like when we were talked about Judge Dredd, um, you, you said yes, like some of those it's kind of like that. Like we're in in uh, 2000 AD or heavy metal, you have it's an anthology, so you have. You know, five page or eight pages of this story, eight pages of this story, eight pages of this story, this character, this character, this character, and then the next week you have the next eight pages. Of the, That's cool. That know. makes sense. Yeah. So, or but with those, I think it was like next month or next two weeks or whatever. So, I'm pretty sure that these were weak. I might be wrong if they were weekly, but well, we, for before our next manga, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure up. to have a little more. Yeah. Uh, or tell us. Why don't you or, guys yeah, or tell, tell us? us. Yeah. 
uh, I don't like to do that much research. So, so, yeah, if you like, if you know, you want to tell us, you know, a lot more about manga listeners out there, just tell us uh, how they. Pre- I know, like Shonen Jump is like one of the big, like ones that publishes, and it's just like a thousand page phone book of, you know, twenty page stories, you know, yeah. and so, um, yeah. So anyway, what would you give this one, John? Oh, like I said, I liked it a lot. The the art was fantastic. Uh, it's it's my first like you know, like I said true quote unquote manga. So, um, I don't want to say it's like hey, if you overgrade like, it or something, then we'll. I mean, but like honestly, Jinji Ito is known for being it's, okay. Well, it was yeah. really fantastic. Honestly, I okay. So like my gut told me to give it a nine. I felt, like, I felt like I was going backwards on it, but I, yeah, I think I'm going to give it a nine because I really enjoyed it. Like, I totally would love, that, like, a continuation of the story or, like, yeah, I would be interested to see more of his Dog stuff. prequel. Yeah, the dog prequel. Stink dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Stink dogs. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, that's very cool. Uh, I'm going to give this an eight. Uh, I thought as a horror story, it worked very well. It was very engrossing. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, it, this, this book was maybe, like, 400 pages, but manga reads so much faster than american comics that like i mean i think i read this whole thing in like an hour and a half or something like that just like because yeah. it's all like running from shark next page yeah you're really it's shark. more it's more <laughs> yeah. appreciating the art yeah and then a couple pages of like solid story and then awesome art yeah, yeah. and then like a little more continuation of the story it's it's cool it's done very well it's, yeah it is done well everything's paced well I never got bored. I never knew what the fuck was going to happen. Yeah, every when, time you turn the page, Especially yeah. when that circus sat. I was like, where are we going now? Like, I have no idea what the fuck is happening now. So, uh, yeah. It's definitely um, in a totally different way of telling a story than I'm used to. It's definitely a unique story where, they're like, it's four levels down, like, at least. Where, like I said, you got... The first one is, oh, there's, like, shark... Or there's, like, fish with legs... But, you know, things growing out of them. Then, oh, it was a government experiment. And then it's like, oh, uh, you know, the actually it's, you know, these. I looked at it and they're actually organisms in themselves that use, they're like bio machines. And it's like, oh, actually, the fourth level down is, no, they're actually Mother Nature. You know, these, these organisms Repurpose evolve them, and, yeah. Yeah, and like make their own bodies and all the, like, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's totally, oh yeah. And there's a spirit aspect to it, which yeah. never gets answered really, but maybe it was his maybe imagination. Maybe it's maybe maybe spirit not. gas uh-huh. farts or whatever. I don't know. Maybe our farts are our spirits that we let out. <gasps> Every time we fart, we're letting a little bit of our spirit. <laughs> exactly. Uh, who knows? I don't know. And I enjoyed the humor in this a little, you know, there's definitely things I think are supposed to be taken like not as serious. Or, There's no way the floaty bag coming yeah. back from it from Okinawa hilarious. all the way back to Tokyo yeah. just floating. You son of a bitch! <laughs> I got you now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one a solid eight. I had fun reading it. Uh, out of now that I've read some more manga, it is not like one of like I think because I've been reading Berserk, and maybe because this is like a actual one shot story. But like Berserk is an ongoing, and so is Vinland Saga, which I'm reading. And those two, I feel, have better stories, but that's probably because they're ongoing stories, whereas this is like one and done. You know, yeah, there's 12 parts to it or whatever, but like it's all in one contained story or whatever. So, yeah. uh, but I did enjoy it a lot. It is horrific. Like I said, I have not read many comics where I turn a page and go, oh, my good God. <laughs> and that happened at least three times in this comic. Agreed, yes. At least. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there was some fucked up stuff in this book, and uh, I appreciated that because that's, that's what you want from a horror book. So uh, it, was, it was totally different than anything else I've ever read, which is very unique and very cool. Um, and, yeah, so I'm going to give it an eight. You're going to give it a nine. Uh Next week, we are going to be reading something that's, for for once, we're going to read something that's actually, like, relevant uh, to pop culture that's happening. Uh, the, the show Sweet Tooth is airing on Netflix. That is based on a comic book uh, from Vertigo. Um, and we are going to read the first volume of Sweet Tooth, which is issues one through five of the 2009 series Sweet Tooth. So, um, check that out. 
and let us spoil it or yeah i'm i'm intrigued because I, all i know is the tiny bit you've told me i didn't even watch the trailer yet deer head boy yeah deer head that's what you see on the cover of the first issue. fallout boy deer head boy oh god i'm kidding hopefully it's not was not made from that oh my god <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to talk about that we in the episode now that i know that so um uh, anyway <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're going to read Sweet Tooth. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email us at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And don't forget about our Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube channel for exclusive content. Matt is really pumping out some uh, comic individual, or specifically like reviews. reviews. And stuff. I'm trying to do, uh, I'm going to try to stay on schedule, I'm gonna try to do two comic reviews a week. Just issue reviews, and then one, like big hardcover or trade paperback review. So, try to get three things out every week on YouTube. So we got some good content, and then as John watches trailers and stuff, he's going to start reacting to one uh, to to those. Uh, just we've been trying to figure it out because we're a little bit new to video editing on like how do you. How do you react to things on YouTube with the audio and all this stuff? So yeah. we're figuring it out, but we'll get there. Uh, we're not the most tech savvy fellas. So, uh, yeah, anyway, um, I guess we'll see you on the next one. Yep. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.